Hello all. In this class, we are going to discuss about OSI model. In the earlier days, every vendor used to create their own networking protocol standards that work only within their vendor product. For example, Cisco discovered something called a Cisco Discovery Protocol that works only within the Cisco devices. Similar is the case with IBM. But in these days, you buy a laptop and back and pack it, bring it to your home and connect your Wi-Fi and start using it and you in your home you have a Huawei router HP laptop uh, Samsung or iPhone mobile phone and uh, Sony smart TV if you look at it they all communicate to each other you can share the files that is because the because of the reason that they all follow the OSI model while building their hardware parts so HP laptop when they build their uh, network cards they ensure that they follow the OSI model that's one example so ISO is an organization that was built to bring a vendor neutral environment to standardize and to reduce the complexity ISO is international organization for standardization they built this OSI model OSI is open systems interconnection the Mail the main goal is to standardize the uh, networking protocols so that all the vendor products can communicate to each other across the globe. The OSA model is categorized into seven layers and it is basically bottom to top approach. The first layer is physical layer, second is data link, third is network layer, fourth is transport, fifth is session, sixth is presentation, and seventh is application layer. We are going to discuss uh, each layers in the OSI model in detail. Let's take an example of a web browser. Application layer does not refer to the web browser itself. It basically refers to the set of protocols that this web browser needs to follow in order to communicate on the network. So remember that application layer does not refer to the application itself. It does not refer to Skype, WhatsApp, or Facebook or any other application that are commonly used but basically it refers to the set of protocols that these applications needs to follow in order to communicate on the network let's take an example of the client and server environment the web browser can running on the client computer pulls and content from the server and the server will respond back with a default page this is a basic uh, example, but it began the screen. This is a very good example. I am showing you. Uh, so consider my computer as uh, a client computer and I am trying to access this web page. So this website is hosted in one of the server. So in order for my browser to load this page and reach the and be able to talk to the server because my computer is Windows and I am uh, using a Chrome browser and the server probably is running a Linux server and I should be able to fetch the content so in order for this communication to work there are a set of standards and protocols defined on the application layer so you look at here like this is a URL that I requested if there is no uh, web page here the server will respond with a default page and this is the method that I use to get the information from the server and the, if this web page is found on the server the server will respond back with the status code of 200 if it is not found the server will respond back with the status code of 404 then the browser will know that okay the web page is available with status code of 200 and the web page is not available with the status code of 404 so this kind of set of standards is what defined at the application layer the next layer is the presentation layer the presentation layer takes data from the application layer and then prepare it uh, for transmission over the session layer the good example is uh, encoding decoding compress decompress encrypt decrypt so these protocol standards are defined at the presentation layer I can show you the same example that we have considered earlier 
that is a web browser browsing a website itadminguide.com so response header and request header so request header is at the client side so my computer when is browsing this website it will request this website and saying that i can accept this kind of compression methods encoding method gzip is a compression method gzip deflate br and the server has responded back saying that i have encoded that is compressed the website using gzip so this kind of compression methods are all defined at the presentation layer the next layer is a session layer in the session layer is primarily used to maintain establish maintain synchronize and terminate the sessions between the end user applications that is take this similar example when you are browsing a website there is a session maintained with the server you look at here when i browse this website there is a session id using this session id the client and the server will know that uh, any uh, communication that happens with this session id is related to this request this is how uh, the server would be able to identify and uh, isolate all the sessions from the clients so when you browse uh, google.com and your neighbor is also browsing google.com using this session id the server would be able to differentiate the request once again all these protocols are operating at the application layer http is a protocol that is used for this protocol is used for web so when you are designing any web application or web browser you need to make sure that this protocol standard is followed when you are developing a email application you need to follow this protocol telnet for remote connection ftp for file transfer dns for name resolution rip is for routing and snmp is for um network monitoring so when you are developing any application or uh, when you are troubleshooting uh, any of the issue you need to basically understand how this protocol works this is the next layer is the transport layer although many uh, protocol exist in other layers of the osi model in transport layer the most commonly used protocols are two one is tcp another is udp so what is the purpose of the transport layer the main purpose is to provide error recovery service let's see how it works let's take a uh, example of client server communication so both of them are communicating with each other the client browser is uh, loading a web page from a server the server is responding back uh, with uh, several responses you see there is a sequential of responses to 1 2 and 3 in this case the uh, the client side uh, due to some um, network issue it has received only 1 and 3 and it lost the um, second packet in transit so the usual uh, expected result is the page would not shown up in the client's computer however with the help of the transport layer the client will make a, a request to the server saying that please send packet number 2 okay the server will respond back with the packet number 2 and the client will say that okay send me back uh, the next sequence that is number 4 okay so in this way in transport with the help of transport layer all the um, uh, data have a sequential number and uh, there is also an acknowledgement so when the client says that uh, send me packet 2 that means packet 1 is received okay and then send me packet 4 that means the server will understand that packet 1 2 and 3 are received so once uh, similarly when the client receives 5 and 6 from the server client uh, will not say that okay i receive 5 and 6 instead it will say that okay send me packet number 7 so the server will understand that 4 5 6 i have safely reached the client side okay this kind of sequencing acknowledging uh, 
you know methodology to avoid uh, packet loss okay is all taken care of the transport layer so transport layer the main objective is uh, error recovery service the next layer that we are going to discuss is the network layer let's take an example of the postal service in order to explain the um, network layer you got two envelopes envelope a envelope b envelope a you want to send it to uh, nearby state envelope b you want to send it to nearby town in both the envelopes you will be writing a unique address right nobody is going to have the same address uh, in the world so this is going to be unique for this destination and you will have a unique address here as well to reach to this destination the next step is uh, you will deposit both the uh, envelopes on the same post box and you expect the postal service to deliver both the letters uh, depending upon the destination um, probably this can be delivered uh, very easily to the nearby town just by taking a cycle or motorbike and this probably be taking a different route taking a truck or larger trucks well the network layer of the tcp ip model also works very similar to the post box um, so in this case each uh, host needs to have a unique ip address the client and the server needs to have a unique ip address in order to communicate to each other so network layer is the one which defines the routing and forwarding packets how to reach the destination yeah. so all defined at the network layer okay. the next layer is the data link layer data link layer takes the data from the network layer adds some control information and forwards it to the physical layer let's take the example of the server and client environment the server responds back to the client with uh, um, lots of information lots of responses however this client can handle only three packets at a time in this case data link layer is the one that handles the flow control to ensure that uh, the client can receive only the amount of packet that it can handle and also error control so if any um, data is lost it is retransmitted to recover the lost frames so both of these are handled by something called a logical link layer so logical link layer I I is presented within data link layer so data link layer contains two layers one is a logical link layer another one is a media access control layer so basically this represents the mac address the final layer is a physical layer the physical layer represents the um, actual physical media that is ethernet or fiber optic or wifi so the physical layer refers to the actual physical media itself so when a host uh, uh, choose to send a packet to another host in this case the uh, network cable represents the physical media the osa model consists of seven layers and it is basically bottom to top approach the first layer is the physical layer second is the data link then network layer transport session presentation layer and finally application layer the application layer does not refers to the application itself it refers to the protocol on which the application was built so for example uh, the application layer does not refers to the whatsapp application but rather the protocol on which the whatsapp application is built the whatsapp application says they are providing end to end encryption that is basically handled at the presentation layer when you are sending a message to uh, one of your friend on the whatsapp it is delivered to the respective person so session is the layer that handles the end to end communication and ensures that the data is 
tra transmitted over to the intended recipient transport layer takes the data from the up upper layer and adds some kind of uh, information to it either tcp or udp to be used for the delivery of the packet so transport layer provides a uh, sequence acknowledgement and error error control the next layer network layer is the one to ensure that the packets are delivered to the destination basically it provides routing functionality ip is a very good uh, example um, that operates in the network layer so we were discussing about the postal service uh, in the postal service the physical address is refers to as the ip address in the network layer the next layer is a data link layer basically it, it adds a mac address on top of the data received from the above layer so i missed out to say that once a packet is uh, transmitted from transport to network layer the network layer adds ip okay so the ip address information are added at the network layer so once it moves, moves on to the net data link layer it adds the mac address information then it is transmitted to the physical interface the next topic is uh, encapsulation and de encapsulation so this is basically the osi layers that we have seen in the last slide so this is application layer presentation session layer transport layer network layer data link layer and physical layer so when the data is sent over the network right at each layer some of the information is added for example as the transport layer we say that whether the data needs to be sent over tcp or udp protocol okay when you add this information to the data this is no more called as a data this is called a datagram otherwise segments when the segment moves to the next uh, layer that is a network layer ip information is added so that the data can be transmitted to the destination when this information is added it is no more called as segments it is called as packet when the data when the packet move on to the next uh, layer which is the data link layer mac address information is added as well as fcs fcs is frame check sequence uh, for the purpose of the exam all you need to know is uh, this is a, a frame check uh, sequence value that you will be used to and to uh, provide uh, error control okay as well as for control as well once this information is added to the packet it is called frames okay then the data will be transmitted over the physical media mm. as a bit so so whether it's a uh, ethernet fiber optic or wifi the data is always transmitted as bits at the receiving side the reverse uh, operation is performed that is de encapsulation so once the frames frames are received the these two head and tail is removed to receive packet information when it moves to the next layer ip information is removed to receive the segments information finally the data is presented to the end user application so these uh, terminologies are very much important when you are troubleshooting a network issue most of the network engineers used to use this terminology to mention that there is a problem at the packet that means there is a problem at the network layer when they say that there is a layer 2 problem then that means there is an issue with the data link layer 
basically there is a problem with the mac address and when the, the engineer says that there is a problem with the l1 that is layer 1 there is something problem with the physical layer itself then you need to look at the physical layer probably you replace the network cable to troubleshoot the issue the OSI model is a logical model the more uh, practical model is the TCP IP model so the major difference is uh, the top three applications are combined into uh, one layer in a TCP IP model otherwise the the whole functionality remains the same the transport layer is called uh, transport layer as well in TCP IP model network layer is called internet layer and then the data link layer and physical layer are all combined together and called as network access layer uh, so OSI model is basically s seven layers TCP IP model is four layers apart from that uh, they serve the same functionalities and you need to ma make sure that uh, the HTTP SMTP telnet all these protocols they basically operate at the application layer in OSI model whereas in TCP IP it's also an application layer however these are all combined the TCP UDP remains same it operates at the transport layer IP operates at the internet layer the Ethernet token ring ATM frame relay are all operate at the network access layer so this is all about the OSI model and the TCP IP model